Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well this Wednesday, October 7th. Want to give you an update uh, here in our Hearthside Dining. It's a very appropriately named room. I want to talk to you today about four things that we're looking at here at Elizabeth with respect to our future. Very exciting things God's put before us. And then I want to spend a little bit of time with you in God's Word as we look ahead to where we're going this Sunday. So the four things I want to talk to you about. The first has to do with an extension campus. That's something we were actually talking about before COVID. Uh, we went through the book Flickering Lamps with our deacons and our staff. And the whole premise of Henry Blackaby's book, Flickering Lamps, is that if you only do what you're confident you can do, then you're never going to experience what only God could do. And it challenged us, you know, Lord, where are there areas where we could step out in faith, not being foolish, but step out in faith and follow you? Uh, areas that you would want to challenge us to help further your kingdom. So one of the things that God laid on our hearts was the possibility of entering into a partnership with a church in some other area, revitalizing a church in some other area, uh, ex doing an extension campus in some other area. We didn't know the details, but we just knew that if God puts this on our hearts, he'll open the doors as we follow his lead. Last year came to our attention that there was a church in the northern part of our county that was closing. And we actually considered, we were approached about possibly purchasing that campus and launching a, a new work there. We sent a team up, they looked at the campus, uh, the facilities needed so much work, it really wasn't feasible to do that. And so we just backed up and said, okay, Lord, open the door, show us where you want us to go. And so that brings us to today's conversation. During COVID, uh, Lon Chenoweth, who's the director of missions over at the Sandy Run Association in Rutherford County, approached us about the possibility of Elizabeth doing an extension campus there in Rutherford County. Alan and one of the lead pastors uh, from the association there in Sandy Run met with our deacons this past Sunday, and we're into that conversation, and we're praying through where God might lead uh, with respect to extending the strength that we have here at Elizabeth. I mean, we've got a lot of strength. We've got a koinonia where we're working together for the furtherance of God's kingdom. There's a, a sweet spirit of cooperation here. We've got a strong biblical foundation where most people who pay attention to what's going on in church life in Cleveland County know where we stand on issues with respect to God's Word. And so we have a lot to share with respect to furthering the kingdom. So it's just exciting to see what God might do there. The three other things I want to talk to you about. I said I want to talk to you about four things before we get into the Word. The remaining three, they are all a direct result of COVID. Uh, the second is the church emergency preparedness team. We've had a church emergency response team for quite a while that deals with emergencies on campus. COVID brought to our realization that we're not prepared to really minister to people in a major crisis off campus in a significant way. Whether we're ministering to our own people off campus or we're ministering to our community, we just weren't prepared. And so the church emergency preparedness team is working toward that end. And it's exciting to see how God's leading them and I'm excited for them to share with you what they're coming up with in the months ahead. Another thing I want to talk to you about, the, the third thing, is the pavilion or the tent. The tent conversation has morphed into a pavilion conversation, and that is, again, very exciting to see how God leads us here at Elizabeth. Uh, a while back, months ago, I mentioned and also wrote in the Elizabethan about how wonderful it would be to have an outdoor worship facility where we would be able to be in the fresh air, we could be socially distanced, and we could worship the Lord together. And the conversation about purchasing a tent has now developed into the conversation about the possibility of building a pavilion, a more permanent, beautiful structure that would tie in with our campus. Our deacons are doing a great job with that conversation. And again, I am very excited for what they'll have to share with you in the months ahead. And then the fourth thing that I want to talk to you about is something that once in a while it was thrown out there prior to COVID, but during COVID, it's really become a, a more substantial conversation. And that is education, uh, particularly Christian education and the feasibility of launching a Christian school. And so we put a team of people together. Uh, they're all very much committed to Christian environments. They're committed to spiritual formation, but they're also committed to academic excellence. And this team of people, they've come up with a questionnaire. And again, this is, at a, this is a feasibility study. It's a very preliminary stage. But they've come up with a questionnaire that they would love for you, the members of Elizabeth, to participate in. If you go to our Facebook page or you go to our website, you can see that the questionnaire is loaded up there. It's, it's eight questions, so it's not going to take you long at all uh, to fill out those eight questions. Our desire is to learn from you 
with respect to the sentiments that you have with, with respect to Christian education and a Christian school here in Cleveland County. And then once we look at the results of that survey, that questionnaire, as, as provided by the Elizabeth congregation, then we wanna share that questionnaire, I and mean, we might need to tweak it a little bit as we learn from it, but we wanna share that questionnaire with other congregations as well to see, because a Christian school has to be just that. It's bigger than one congregation. It has to be for a whole community. And so pray about that. Again, four very, very exciting things that God has us doing right in the midst of COVID. You know, we've got the possibility of an extension campus. We have a church emergency preparedness team going on. We have a team of deacons that are working on a, pre a presentation about building an outdoor worship pavilion. And then we've got a feasibility team looking at the possibility of starting a Christian school. So pray for us, be excited for what God is doing. This is one of the most exciting times in the life of the ministry. Yes, our programs and our activities have really slowed down, but listen, hear me in this. Because our programs and activities have slowed down, it's given us the opportunity to be still, to pray, to ask God, Lord, where do you want us to go? You know, rather than just doing the things that we think we should be doing because we've always been doing them, where do you want us to go? Where do you want to lead us? And I'm telling you, God is leading us, and it's just a privilege to watch what he's doing among his people here at Elizabeth. And so again, as it, fill out the questionnaire. That's going to be a big help to us, and then pass the information to others so they can fill it out. It's going to be on our Facebook page. It's going to be on our website as well. I told you last thing, I'd give your attention to God's word uh, so that we can look ahead to Sunday. Sunday's message is titled, The First Song in the Hymnal. Now, I'm not talking about our Baptist hymnal. I'm talking about Israel's hymnal, and Israel's hymnal was the book of Psalms. All of the Psalms are simply songs that the, the, is, the community of Israel, the worshipers of Israel, would sing as they worship the Lord. And the very first song, or the very first psalm, uh, is a beautiful one that talks about following the Lord. I'm just going to read it for you now. Uh, and then we're going to really jump into it on Sunday. So spend some time thinking about this beyond just me reading it to you right now. And then as we talk more about it on Sunday, there's no doubt in my mind, you'll be blessed. Listen to this song. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his, de law is in the light of, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does will prosper. But the ungodly are not so. They are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the ways of the righteous." but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So think about that, read through it, pray through it, and then we look forward to worshiping with you as we talk about Psalm 1 this Sunday. God bless you.